There we go. So hi, Rebecca. Thank you for joining me for this interview series um, to share with the people interested in going to Birmingham. My pleasure. To, to start off with, I, I was um, just going to let you do like a, a brief introduction of who you are, how mm -hmm. you ended up at the event in the first place, and then we can take it from there. Perfect. Lovely. Um, yeah, so thank you. Thank you for asking me. It's, it's a pleasure to be here and I'm uh, yeah, two hundred percent behind. You know what what Matt and the team are creating in Birmingham. So more than happy to to talk about it. So, um, yeah. So my my story to uh, London um, way back when we were saying before we came on record. You know, it's trying to remember back that far, but I can really clearly because it was so important to me. So. I sort of give the background of it. I first picked up the the book, The Ultimate Coach, on Christmas Day, two thousand and twenty one, uh, which is a whole other story that I, you know, I let people find out about if they go and find me on on social media. But I picked the book up on Christmas Day. I'd had it for a couple of weeks. Lovely Fiona Ross had sort of been talking about the book and what was going. And I sort of picked it up through my coaching school, and so I'd bought the book a few weeks before, hadn't really read it. Christmas Day, picked it up, started reading it. It was like, oh my gosh. Um, uh, did what I was asked to do and read it about myself, I think, even if that was a bit more subconscious than, than the next few times I read it about myself. But um, and was just really drawn in, really fascinated. Joined the Facebook group from the, you know, from the book, because if you, you know, it tells you to go and do that. So I did that. Started, you know, getting to know people in there. And um uh in, I was in a coaching school at the time, and we were working on our I am declar declarations um, in the coaching school. So we were talking about Steve and the book and, and, and the work that he was doing. Um, and I made a commitment at the time with my coach in the coaching school that I was going to go and have a be with session with Steve Hardison. Um, and I started saving money towards that. And then so I started that process. And then, of course, it was like, there's going to be an event because um, I think Matt's Matt Smith, when he had the revelation about London event was just before Christmas or around Christmas time. So it all sort of happened at the same time. So I started to get involved with what was going on in London. I live in Kent in the UK. So London's like, you know, 60 miles that way. So I was like, great, I can do this. Um, got to know Matt and Fiona, who's a dear friend of mine, was involved in, in the team putting it together. Um, so uh, I thought, well, while I'm saving up to go and have a be with se session with Steve Hardison one to one, I'll I'll crack along and go along with 500 other people. So I bought my ticket really early doors, um, and uh, so it was what the 30th of April, wasn't it, 2022? So I think it was a couple of years ago. I know that. <laughs> so, yeah, I think it was the 30th of April, 2022, and so I was yeah so excited. I think it was the first big event I'd been to since COVID, as well. So as well as it just being this incredible event with all these amazing speakers who I didn't really know, other than the book, I didn't really know much about any of those other people that were going to be speaking at that time. Um, so I was super excited, but didn't really know what I was in for. But also it was this being back in a room with 500 odd people after, you know, all the all the things that we'd had with COVID. So I rocked up to London in my, I have a bit of a theme of pink. It's a theme. Um, <laughs> and so I had a, a shaggy pink coat on and I rocked up to, to, to London and met up with Matt Evans and met up with quite a few other people that I knew that were going to be at the event, walked into the auditorium. Fiona Ross was up on stage setting the scene for the day, which was just one of the most beautiful um, invitations of how to be at an event that I've ever heard. It's just incredible. And then basically sat there as I was blown away by all the speakers that came on from, you know, Alan D. Thompson, I think Alan D. Thompson got Steve Hardison up on stage within about 10 minutes of us being there, which was incredible. Amy Hardison, who's an absolute angel. Um, Karen Ray, um, just everyone who was up there was just incredible. Um, uh, so, yeah, that's that's kind of me. in terms of me. So I live in, like I say, in Kent in the UK. Uh, I'm Rebecca Shannon. I'm a coach. So that was my interest in 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 the book originally, although it's way beyond being a coach, obviously. Um, and what else do I need to tell you? Uh, Mum of three boys, um, like pink. That's 
<laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, I love yeah, so I probably said far too much there, Victoria, but I told you, I um, did warn you I talk a lot. <laughs> do you know what? What's really beautiful, because I don't think I've, um, or if I have, I've not done it fully, taken a moment to really appreciate the effort that went into creating the day and the remarkable job that the that the uh, like event team did because that it it was phenomenal wasn't it and and Absolutely. everything was thought of so um i'm really glad that that you you mentioned a few of them there and i know there were more people involved in it um than that and so i'm going to take this invitation for them to take that acknowledgement as as well um yeah it but was i yeah. Sorry, I was just going to say, because I at one point when they were putting the team together to organise the event, I did put my hat in the ring to get involved in the team. Um, but for, for lots of reasons, I quickly realised how much time and attention was going to have to go into being on that team, being part of the team, putting it together. And at the time, for personal reasons, I just couldn't give that level of support so i spoke to matt and fiona and just said look i would love to be involved i will do whatever i can to support it but i can't i won't be able to give 120 percent to the team right now with what's going on in my life so that again and i'm saying that not you know not to share about me to, but to share about the commitment that went into it from the people who were involved and like you say i spoke about fiona being on the on you know on the stage but the the attention to detail for that event from when you first arrived and registered. And, you know, there were people that I've been speaking to on Facebook and been on, you know, that, that then as soon as I arrived, you know, met these people, you know, how we were greeted at the event, how, you know, how the breakout areas were and the refreshments and, and, you know, just, just everything, photos being taken, just, you know, the level of attention was just incredible. And I know how much it takes to organize events like that. So, yes, you're right. We really need to acknowledge the team behind it. It's incredible. Effectively a full-time job. And, like, I'm seeing it with this event as well. Like, e even on the build-up and the lead-up to it, there's so much being um, given and shared with people so, so that they can, like, um, get the most out of the two days. I, I remember going to London and it was like... Um, just meeting a, 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 I mean, there were some people that I knew before the event, mm -hmm. but but even the ones um, that I I barely knew, there was a connection there because of all the the work that had gone in beforehand. Absolutely. So it was like meeting up in in a giant, like a big school reunion or something, yeah. wasn't it? Absolutely, yeah. yeah, it was. Yeah, it just yeah, and and like you say, it was it was. I remember before the event like just wandering around and just like like you say seeing these people that you'd seen on facebook or seen it and just going up to them like like you knew them like just oh hi it's dave hi dave it's rebecca you know it's just like you say like a school reunion it was just incredible i mean matt evans who's become a very very dear friend of mine we'd never met up until that day and we've got the most gorgeous picture of us together you know big cuddles and and you know you to any anyone outside you thought we'd known each other for years and that we'd spent lots of time together. Um, and, and we had that was the first time we'd met. And obviously he was mega busy on the day. So we had, you know, a couple of snatched moments, but that was it. But um, and for me, being in the coaching world, obviously there were quite a lot of coaches there. Um, you know, there were uh, and many of them I'd been in coaching schools with for two or three years, never met because it was all online. And suddenly they there we were all in a in a room together. Um, and even like you say, people that I'd never met you know, never met before. I remember one lady, um, and I love these little stories. So one lady that I met, she she noticed my hot pink coat, which is <laughs> not hard, really. I mean, it's a big shaggy pink coat. And she just came up to me and she went, oh, I love your coat. It's such a gorgeous color. And she went, and she had the most gorgeous pink lipstick on that was like exactly the color of my coat. And I was like, oh my God, I love your lipstick. And she was like, right, come with me. And, you know, we had a slick of, of lipstick on, someone I'd never met before. And connected because of, of of that um and yeah just yeah just incredible incredible feeling from from the moment you arrived and walked in and all the people doing all the registrations and i know how much i know how tiring those are. i've done those events before in my previous world as life as a, a corporate person you know they're exhausting um but the energy was just so welcoming and fun and and upbeat so yeah 
I love what you're sharing here. Like we've not even got into like what you got from the day, but I <laughs> I love the um the 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 picture that you're you're painting, the feel of the day that was very much a part of everything else and everything that you got to take away from it. Um, because that atmosphere is is conducive to um positivity to optimism to seeing something that perhaps you've not like seen before so yeah. I, I i love that we've spent the time exploring that can yeah can um, i say one more thing about that as well if that's okay yeah. Victor? i did warn you that i talk a lot <laughs> um so two actually two things i want to share because i think it's really important that point you've picked up and i know that you want to get people to really feel what the you know it's not just an event right it's the first it's just it's not just an event and you know the people that are likely to be going have read the book have had an experience of many of the people in this world you know one of the things that i learned in my journey to being in that event was that one it was all about me you know not in a selfish way but that that it was the person on the seat in that in that room that was going to get you know was going to benefit from from that room and that that I was the one that was going to create that. If I showed up waiting for everyone there to make it a great day for me, it wasn't going to have the same impact. And this has been a theme that I've learned. You know, I did go and see Steve Hardison in, in Arizona last year. Um, you know, that's been a theme, you know, when is, is I'm, I've learned through my experience of working with uh, the people involved in the Ultimate Coach um, uh, experience and, and movement is I get to create it the way I want to create it. So I showed up that day that I was going to have the best day ever, that I brought that energy and then everyone else in the room brought that energy as well. And it was really funny. I have to share this. So, so funny that we're speaking today. So I was at a, a, another event last night with the amazing Liz Gilbert, the author, uh, an audience with Liz Gilbert. And I was right in, I think, the second row. A friend of mine got me a seat right in the second row. And I'd met Liz earlier. We did a meet and greet thing. So incredible. Another person that's a like hero to me. So incredible event. And as I, as it was ending and we were all sort of starting to stand up and leave, a lady just behind me tapped me on the shoulder and she said, I think I know you. And I was like, I looked at her and I was like, okay. And she went, we met at the ultimate coach experience in London in in the registration queue so this before we'd even yes. got in the room and we had a lovely lady called emma emma if you're watching it's lovely to see you and as soon as she said that i was like oh my god yeah hi i couldn't remember her name and I said, but i remember talking to her and that's what happened i made several great connections before we'd even been registered and got into the into the room so just i wanted to pick those two things up so i i showed up with the energy of this is going to be the best day ever and and with that intention i was starting to get takeaways from when I was stood outside queuing to get in, let alone what I saw up on the stage. And, and I love that you you uh, mentioned that. I think in in a in a previous interview we've talked about the like being a VIP, having a VIP seat, and what that means, and um, like how you turn up to be that. And and while we're on this point, while you've shared that. That starts before you even get into the room. So, so right now there are there are resources being shared. There are interviews. The the, the speakers are already giving like um, brief masterclasses, yeah. and all that is available before even um, getting to the event. Before bef before sitting down in the seats and like the extent to which you um, people take part and um, are, are willing to, the, the connection bingo as well, the, yeah. the extent to which people take part will have an effect on who they're being, how they're creating the day and what what the experience for themselves. So, yeah. so I, I so, love that you brought that up um, and we can like make that point like really yeah. explicitly. Yeah, and uh, yeah, absolutely. Yes. So, so now we're going to get to it's yeah. two years ago. You've also <laughs> had your like be with session with Steve. So I think like what what I'd love to know is what's different for you now than 
than a couple of years ago? You know, what what's really stuck with you and had a, a profound effect? Like it, it it's oh. it it's affecting the way you show up and what's going on in in, in the world around you because of that. Well, it might be easier to start with what hasn't changed. That might take less time. <laughs> Because <laughs> literally everything, you know, ev everything. Um, the journey to London and everything that's occurred since, for me personally, um, it's changed everything. Like, like literally everything. Now, now when I say everything, there's a lot that's the same, right? There's a, a, as in, you know, my life has not. Well, it has. I've moved three. I've, I've moved twice since then, and lots of other things have happened. But. Um, just who I am being has changed, you know, and I know we talk about it being the being the book of being and the being movement and it gets talked about a lot. But fundamentally, that is what has occurred in my life is who I am being has shifted to such an extent. And yes, going and spending time with Steve Hardison one to one was obviously gave that a big, you know, boost. And every other interaction, conversation, masterclass, event, book reading, one-on-one -on -one connection bingo has impacted and changed who I am being on a day-to-day -day basis. So I want to slow that down a little bit because mm -hmm. that's, that's easy to say and when you experience it it's easy to to brush over and to condense into like the the the, the few words that are the quickest to say yeah but if you had to go into detail if you had to choose like one example how were you being before com like like what did that look like? What did it feel like? And compared to how you are being now, and, yeah. and it doesn't have to be every single thing, but like ju just okay. one example of that. Well, I think, okay, so one really strong example of it would be the, the sort of judgments forgiveness piece. Okay, so who I was being before that was there was a lot of, you know, I was already a coach. I was already on the coaching journey. I was already working with great coaches. I was doing a lot of work on myself. But fundamentally, the the voice inside my head, what the the judgy, non forgiving voice was still wasn't who I was being a hundred percent, but it was still impacting who I was being. So the big, so the the one shift that I would say that's happened the most is that that voice, not a hundred percent of the time but more often than not now is not the judgmental non-forgiving voice that it was that who I am being at that very core of judging myself, judging, judging and not forgiving myself and judging and not forgiving others is the one thing that shifted the most for me. And that's why when I say everything, because I think that is that yeah. impacts on so many other things, right? And I don't want to skip over that either because that okay. that is massive, isn't it? I'm going to say like a, a few things from my experience. This is literally putting words in your mouth. So if it's not the same experience, you share the impact of that for you. Mm -hmm. But hearing that, like it, it, in my world, when that voice quietens, when it's not there as often, like, you get to experience and see more and suddenly um there are more you, you notice more opportunities or the opportunities that were there you're more willing to follow up and and I'm not just talking about opportunities for work but opportunities for deeper connection with someone for a better relationship with someone for a kind gesture with with someone you just there is more awareness of of like what's exactly in front of you when when there's not that that much judgment and criticism going on absolutely yeah a absolutely and you know tangible results of that 
is, you know, we had a bit of a joke before I came on because I was a couple of minutes late about dealing with some stuff from my past, who I'm being with stuff that comes up. Life still happens. You know, I'm a, I'm a divorced mum of three children and life happens. I was in a relationship that didn't, wasn't giving me what I wanted, you know, and that, you know, has been a, a very difficult journey to go through coming out of that relationship. But because of that awareness of, of what's available to me, that's enabled me to, to work through some really tough stuff to shift who I am being and, and what my future is going to be. That's what that gives you, that connection to, doesn't mean life doesn't happen, doesn't mean rubbish things don't happen, doesn't mean that um, everything is like a, you know, rainbows and unicorns, right? It, it, that's not how it works, but who you are being with that changes. So that's kind of the, the opportunities and things that come up that you have to still deal with, but who I'm being with it is different because of that change here. And then as you said, the, uh, the flip side of that is, oh my God, the stuff that you start seeing. You know, I, you know, the real tangible results since getting involved, you know, since going to London and, and everything that's happened through that. So, yes, went to Steve, you know, see Steve in, in Phoenix, Arizona, created a whole trip to go there coming from. And I, I share this in, in my journey about this with Steve, Steve knows this as well. right? I got to the point and this was influenced by JP Morgan, who shared about his journey was I was like, I don't really care if Steve shows up or not. I'm still going to have a great time. Right. And I and I did because I was I was coming from that new place. So therefore, I knew that if I dropped all the judgments and that, you know, well, why am I here and should I be doing this and should I be somewhere else? And it meant I could create an experience that would be life changing for me. Even if nobody else showed up now, he did. So that's OK. But <laughs> but but also then um, and he was amazing. But also by creating that as right, I'm going to go and do this adventure. I'm going to go out there. And I spoke to people like Matt Evans, who was like, right, OK, I'm, I know loads of people out there. Who, do, who, who can you go and meet? So out of that trip, I went and met people through Nick Smith. I didn't get to meet Nick when I was out there, but I, I got to, to meet people from that world that, that he knew. So Nick was like, I'm not there, but here's six or seven people you could meet while you're there. I got to go to an event that Judy and Eric Thelson and Dave Orton and Steve Bacon and... Uh, who else was there? Raphael Wolf. You know, I went and had a, a, a day with them before I'd even got to see Steve Hardison, all because of putting myself in that room. Well, firstly, reading the book. Secondly, putting myself in the room where I made all these connections. Dave and Penny Orton I met in London. Eric and, and Judy I met in London. And then, you know, a year later, I'm in a room with them, with all these incredible speakers. Uh, Casey and Lindsay Gilman met yeah, Casey in London, then met them in. So that opened up from my, this connection, being in that room, all those things. I uh, attended a Game Changer event with Devin Banderson last year. I'm doing an event with him and Jess, going to an event they're running in London in, in July with him and Jess. I'm now in the Game Changer community. I've had amazing calls with Nick Smith since then. I've had calls with Judy. Uh, and Dave and all these other people, all the bingo connections, the connection bingo that I've been on, all of these opportunities for, as you say, things, tangible things. You know, I've gone and done other experiences. It has impacted my business. You know, I'm a coach. Everything I'm learning, it's impacting. But also some of those conversations have taken me to depths of understanding of myself that just, you know, I just wouldn't have experienced before. And so, like, and obviously, we're not saying go to Birmingham and you will get a chance to be with this person and that person, and then this will happen and that will happen. Um, but what what I'm like really seeing is there's, there's like at the at Birmingham, anywhere, reading the book, listening to the masterclasses, um, like be, beforehand, there is op an opportunity to relate to ourselves and the world and others in such a way that um our life changes like because of it. All, all the things that we're doing how we turn up to life changes and that just has a knock-on effect in so many different ways in, in like um that, that that we we couldn't imagine we couldn't predict um but it's it's not it's not the things that are, that are happening or it it's just how we are relating to life 
and ourselves and to others. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, as you're saying that, you know, if you, if you want one word that, you know, being is a word that gets banded around a, a lot. Right. But actually the word that that really changes things and that you learn at these, you know, whether it's the book, Birmingham, um, is that we create our world. We are creating our world all the time. One of the, one of the most powerful things that that I got from from London, listening on the stage, and it landed at a certain level. And then you know I you know I went away and and did the work and 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 went and met Steve and all of that was the the big sh the biggest shift for me was realizing how. And Steve said this so so brilliantly when I was with him was like you are creating your world anyway by default, right? You you're creating it by default. If you, you know, again, another way you could say this, what's different about my life is I was still very much on default mode before I came into this world. And now I'm on create mode. So what shifted was, you know, he's like, you are creating your world by default. What you get to do now by having this awareness is you get to create it the way you want. You don't have to learn how to do that because you're already doing it. That's not the bit you're learning. What you're, and he always said about like a, um, a projector. You know, you're projecting it this way out into the world and creating your world that way. All we're doing is just deciding that we're going to move the way that we're projecting it. You don't you don't have to learn the projection because you're already doing that. It's just you get to create it. So, so for, you know, I will create my experience in the room in Birmingham. And I'm talking to the people who are you know here now is um, you you will get to create it exactly how you create it. So if you create it in a way that's like, I don't, I don't believe them. I think they're talking rubbish. I don't know who these people are. I don't, I don't agree with them. Right. I'm not going to get anything from this event. Oh God, it's just another event, whatever it is. Or I'm only here because someone said I had to be or whatever. If you create it that way, it's what you're going to get. Yeah. But if you decide this is going to be the most impactful weekend of my life and every conversation I have is going to create a possibility for something, even if it's just a connection in that moment, a hug, a, 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 an eye to eye contact with someone, then that is what you'll get. It's that easy. I apps, I, I'm getting like I'm getting goosebumps as you're talking because, like, once you see that, you can't unsee it, can you? No. And, um, like, there's so much to play around with there. <laughs> I, I think I'm gonna leave. <laughs> this interview at that unless you've got any last words you want to add because I think that's just an, an amazing summary yeah go to Birmingham that's the only other thing I have to say <laughs> <laughs> thank you thank you very much Rebecca and uh, I will thank speak you. to you and see you soon thank you very much